Have you ever tried to make a pattern background in Pixelmator Pro? If you've given it a whirl, you know how tricky it can be. Today, I'm gonna to show you the secrets to creating a repeating patterned background like these in Pixelmator. Let's just dive right in. So here we are in Pixelmator Pro. Obviously you'd wanna start with a background. I've just got a simple solid color here. And then I want to create a flamingo patterned background. So I'm going to reach for the shape tools in Pixelmator Pro and head down to animals. And I know that there happens to be a flamingo that comes with Pixelmator. Before we go any further, I wanna show you why this is so tricky. You probably would reach for a tile effect, but let me show you what happens when you do that. So I'm gonna select my flamingo, head on over to the effects tools, and I'm going to add an effect. And down here, you can see that there's a menu of different tiling options for effects. The one we wanna reach for is the affine tile. And with this tile effect, I only have a few sliding options here. I can make the flamingos all bigger, I can stretch them out, and I can skew them. But no matter what I do with these sliders, those flamingos are forever clustered tightly together. But we're looking to make a background with multiple spread out elements. So it's clearly not gonna work. I'm gonna show you the secrets to spacing out those elements. So I'm gonna trash that tile effect. And what I wanna do is draw a square around this flamingo, but there's a very specific way you need to do this. I would not reach for my shape tools and just grab the rectangle shape and draw because I need my rectangle to be perfectly centered in the frame. The way I would recommend you do this is go back to the general shapes and drop in this square into the canvas by double clicking on it. And now I know that that square is perfectly centered. I'm gonna change the color of it just so I can differentiate between it and my flamingo. And here in my layers panel, I'm gonna reorder these guys so the flamingo's on top. Now I wanna make this rectangle a little bit bigger, but I want to preserve the aspect ratio and the center placement of it. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and the option key, grab a corner and click and drag. And you can see that my shape is still a square and it is still perfectly centered. Now in our layers panel, I'm going to select both the flamingo and my rectangle, right click and group these guys together. And then I'm gonna expand this group. And now select it on the group layer, we're gonna go back to effects by hitting the F key. I'm gonna add an effect. And again, we're going to select that affine tile. And now you can see that I have spaced out my flamingos. And if I want them spaced out more or less, what I would do is in my layers panel, grab that rectangle, hit V to bring up the arrange tool. And I'm going to again, hold down shift and option while I click and drag and make that rectangle bigger. And I really wanna space out my flamingos like so. And so we are getting this pattern here. However, I don't wanna see this rectangle. I wanna see my original image layer underneath. Well, one idea would be to bring the opacity down to zero. But look what happens when you bring the opacity down to zero. It's as if that rectangle didn't exist and all my flamingos are clustered together again the way I didn't want them to be. So I'm gonna show you a very sneaky trick. But before I do that, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. So here is the top secret tip for maintaining the spacing around my flamingos, but hiding that rectangle. We're gonna head on up to the opacity slider. This is so sneaky, you guys. And where it says 0% here, I'm just gonna double click on it and I'm going to manually on my keyboard, enter a value of 0.1. And when I do that, you'll see the opacity still says zero, but I have maintained the spacing around my flamingos. Tricky, 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 Pixelmator. Now, if I wanted to modify the spacing of these flamingos, I could still select that rectangle and play with the size of it, even though it's no longer visible. So now that we understand how to space out our elements, let's have a little more fun. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of my flamingo here. So I'm just gonna double click on it in my layers panel and click on the spectrum icon next to the color picker. And I have a whole color palette here I'm going to pull from. So let's make these flamingos this color. Now I wanna add more flamingos. So select that group, right click and duplicate it. I'm gonna open up my duplicate and I'm going to select my new flamingo and change the color of that. And now I wanna offset the layout of my group copy. So what I'm going to do is select the group and I'm going to hit the shortcut Command T to bring up the transform tools. Now I'm going to reposition this group so that I have double the amount of flamingos. So I'm going to select this square box in the middle of my canvas and I'm going to hold down the shift key and that's going to keep me moving only on the horizontal plane. 
And now I'm going to release the shift key, release my mouse button and do this again. I'm going to hold down shift, click with my mouse. And this time I'm going to push up. So I'm pushing up perfectly straight. And now I have double the flamingos and I'm going to hit return to apply this. Now I'm going to select my new flamingo and I'm going to head up to arrange and I'm going to flip this guy horizontally. So some flamingos are facing to the right and some are facing to the left. And then I want to add more elements in between my flamingo. So again, I'm going to select my group copy and I'm going to duplicate it. Let's head down to the shape tools again and let's pick a different shape. I am going to pick this palm front here and I'm just going to double click it to apply it into my canvas. And in my layers panel, I'm going to open up my latest group and drag that palm frond into that group. So now I've replicated those palm fronds and I'm going to hide my flamingo from that group. I don't need it anymore. And let's change the color of this palm frond. And now I'm going to select the newest group again, hit command T to open up the transform tools. And I'm going to reposition this palm frond like so. And I'm going to hit apply. And then I actually want to make these all a little bit smaller. So I'm going to select just the palm front, hold down shift and option while I shrink that up. And then let's go back to the arrange menu and maybe rotate it a little bit. And let's add one more element here. So again, I'm going to duplicate my newest group. And now I'm going to go back to my shape tool and pick another shape. Let's pick this shape. It looks like the top of a palm tree. Double click it to add it to my layers panel and then drag it into my newest group. Let's hide the palm fronds. And these guys are kind of big. I want to shrink them down. So I'm going to select that palm tree, hold down my shift and option keys and shrink it down nice and small. And now the spacing doesn't seem quite right on these. So I'm going to select the group, hit command T to open up the transform tools. And let's see if we can get this feeling a little bit better here. Yeah, the spacing on this doesn't quite work the same on this particular shape for some reason. You can see that it's perfectly centered between these four flamingos, but then if I move down here, it's way off. So what I'm going to do is apply these changes, but then I'm going to select the rectangle from that group. And I'm going to try to play with the dimensions of this to get everything centered. Yeah, that's a lot better. And change the color of this one too. So that is how you create a repeating background in Pixelmator Pro. I told you guys this one was tricky. If you want to see more Pixelmator Pro tutorials, here's a whole playlist just for you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I'll see you guys again.